Hello, this is CJ Hoyle. Today is Thursday, February the 18th, 2021, and I'm standing here in front of the intersection of Bloor Street West and Keel Street. Strapped onto my feet down here are my cross-country skis, and in this video I'm gonna be doing some urban cross-country skiing through High Park. All right, so the time currently is about 7.15 a.m. And my plan is that I'm gonna be skiing from this corner of High Park at Keel Street and Bloor Street West. And I'm gonna ski over towards Grenadier Pond. So I start off with a little bit of a downhill into this valley here. And then I'm gonna make a right turn into this valley and I'll start working my way up the hill. And up ahead of me you can see there are some other cross-country skiers. I apologize if there's any shakiness with the camera. I'm gonna do my best to ski as steady as possible. <laughs> at the sacrifice of not going as fast as I may go if I wasn't recording. And I anticipate as the sun comes up more, it will get easier to see because the sun only came up about 10 or 15 minutes ago. So it's still relatively dark out here, although with all the white snow, everything is more reflective. So I'm climbing up a fairly steep hill here. There's so many different ways to get around this park. It's really a maze of different trails, but I figured this would be a, an interesting way to get from Keel Street over towards the middle of the park. High Park is known for being a relatively hilly area of Toronto. I posted another cross-country skiing video before this one, which is me skiing through Cedarvale Park, which is a relatively flat park. So I wanted to come and do this one next because I knew it would be quite a bit different and hopefully maybe more interesting with more hills. So I'm now at the top of the top of that hill out of that ravine, heading over towards where the baseball diamonds are here in High Park. If you're not familiar, High Park is a, a large park in the west end of downtown Toronto. It's certainly the biggest park, you know, close to the downtown if you exclude Toronto Island Park. And for me, it's just a subway ride away, so it's a great place to come on a morning before work to get in some cross country skiing while we still have this nice snow that allows for this. The video that I filmed of Cedarvale was actually filmed about 14 hours ago. I filmed it yesterday after work. And we haven't received any new snow since then. This is the same snow as there. All right, what should I do here? I think I'll ski on this, uh, yeah, I'll ski on this path here. Or maybe actually there's some tracks here that I can follow, which would be a bit better than that. These are tracks left by other cross country skiers. None of the places that I'm gonna be skiing today are, you know, formal, cross-country ski trails they're just they're just trails through a park that aren't don't receive 
winter snow removal maintenance, which when there's enough snow, you can use them for cross country skiing as others have done. So this here that I'm about to cross is the road or the entrance into the park from High Park Boulevard and I'm gonna take my skis off to get over here because I can't ski on the asphalt. And as tempting as it might be, I'm not gonna put my skis on here. I'm gonna wait until I get across the second part of this roadway. These skis are pretty fast to take on and off, but it's not really worth it for that short of a stretch. I might as well wait until I'm all the way across the roadway here. So just turn to the right here, if I were to go out that, you know, out through that entrance of the park or exit of the park onto Bloor Street, that's where the High Park subway station is. So if you're coming to High Park to, you know, experience the park and you're coming by subway, you have the option of getting off there at High Park Station, or you can get off at the station just before it or just east of it, which is Keel Station. And that's the station that I used to get here today because I wanted to start right there in the corner of the park so I could maximize my distance skiing through the park. So yeah, I'm not really following a trail here. I mean, I am following some tracks left by another skier, but my plan is that I'm gonna kind of follow along the, the line that Bluer follows because there's an entrance into the park or there's an entrance into a trail which runs along the sort of western edge or the western boundary of the park. And it goes through the woods and it should be, should be a nice area to ski down. I have, I have skied here, not yet in this year in 2021, this is my first time here, but I did ski here a couple of times back in the winter of 2019. So everywhere that I'm skiing today, I have done before, but just not very recently. And I imagine there's people who are watching this video who are much more familiar with High Park than I am. So I'm gonna do my best to navigate here based on memory. All right, so I'm gonna ski down here and that's a bit of a hill, but I gotta be careful because Right at the bottom of it, it goes onto Bloor Street and I don't want to be skiing out onto there. So I'll go slowly. There we go. And here's my entrance into the ravine. This is where I was trying to get to. A nice hill to go down here. All right, a little, little bit of a hill to climb up here before I get to go down some more. So this is basically following the ravine that flows into Grenadier Pond. There's a little bit of a, a creek that flows over towards my right. I'm not sure what the name of that creek is. And the last time that I skied here, it was sort of in an evening right after work. Again, back in 2019, right around dusk. So I was skiing through here and I remember seeing through the trees uh, two coyotes who were wandering around through here. They were, you know, in the distance. Like, they didn't get very close to me, but I could, could certainly see them and recognize them as coyotes versus just people's dogs.
All right, so we'll continue our way down here. Another downhill to enjoy. But yeah, it's really great to be able to come and do this cross-country skiing here in High Park. I really enjoy taking my skis out and wandering through the city through parks and trails like this. All right, I think I want to go down here. The device that I would normally be using for navigation for this sort of activity is my smartphone. Wow, look at all the ducks over there. These are all mallard ducks. You hear them all quacking away. So as I was saying, the device that I normally use for navigation for this sort of, you know, urban activity is my my smartphone, but I'm actually filming this video right now using my smartphone. I have it mounted to a, a chest mount, so my phone is not available right now for navigation, so I'm having to go by memory. So I'm picking the simplest routes through this park. You can see there's a bunch of water down here at the bottom that's frozen into some, some ice. Not the best for skiing on. The weather forecast was calling for some snow today. It's supposed to snow this morning, but they've called that off. The snow, if it comes, is supposed to be coming tomorrow morning and throughout the day. Not an awful lot of snow though. But there is some. This is about 15 centimeters perhaps. So straight ahead, that's Grenadier Pond. You can see there's quite a few people who are out on the ice skiing around and there's probably too much snow on the ice for people to really skate on the pond, but I passed the person over there on the right who was skiing. Actually, over there to my right, I can see some areas where they've been shoveling the, shoveling the ice for the pond there, so I guess there is a skating rink. The yellow signs there do say no skating, no access, so the city of Toronto doesn't really want people going out on the ice according to those signs at least. So all these trails that I'm skiing on right now, they're trails you can come and see on your own. I mean, if you have a pair of skis and it's still, there's still a nice snow coverage, I would encourage you to come and try some cross country skiing here in High Park or in other areas. But these trails are also available throughout the year for cycling and walking and hiking and you name it. I've certainly ridden my bike here before and walked around. Let me just show you those skating rinks while we're, while we're passing them. So someone's been maintaining and shoveling those into those nice pads for people to skate on. Like I said, the signs do say no, no skating. And I believe for many, many years, the city's policy was just simply, no, you can't go on the ice. But I had heard somewhere that this winter or 
maybe a couple of winters ago, they started doing things differently and they actually had city employees coming out and monitoring the ice and measuring the thickness of it and, you know, allowing people to use the ice. So perhaps these yellow signs are outdated. I'm certainly not an expert. I imagine that because it's been, you know, quite cold for the last, you know, pretty much continuously, it's stayed below freezing for the last two weeks at least, I would think that the ice out there is, is pretty solid. Although it's always the ice, well, even in conditions when the ice can be very thick, the ice towards the edges of, the, of a pond or of a lake tend to be the ones that are the most dangerous. That's where the, the ice can break when you're trying to get out onto the ice. So over there towards the left, that's where the Secura cherry blossom, where the Secura cherry trees are where many people come to experience the cherry blossoms each year at, at High Park. I made a video a couple years back where I rode my bike over here to see the cherry blossoms. All right, so the trail here is actually They've actually uh, plowed the trail, so I can't really continue here. So I think I actually am gonna try skating on the ice, or try skiing on the ice, I mean. Join those other people that are out there so I can, just so I can get around this section of plowed trail here. There's so many tracks out there that I'm quite confident that it's gonna be safe despite the yellow signs. And I think this probably marks the first time that I've ever been out out here on Grenadier Pond. Just follow these ski tracks here. This really wasn't part of my original plan, but my plan was just to skate over to Grenadier Pond, but skiing right on, it's even better than that. Not sure what those orange poles are out there. I'm sure they're stuck into the snow and ice. They're not, you know, not attached below the water or anything. Now that person who's skiing towards me, they're, they're doing what's called skating with cross country skis skate skiing. Hello. I'm just doing classic skiing here, but maybe I'll try skating for a little bit here just so we can see how it works. My, my main concern is just that the camera will be too shaky for a good video and I can already sense that it probably is, so I'm gonna stop skating, but As I'm skiing here, I really am conscious of keeping the camera steady because I know that my image stabilization on this phone is not, is not perfect. So I try and ski as stable as I can, even though it means skiing quite a bit slower than I would prefer to ski. There you can see another skating area towards the right over there with some, with some hockey nets. All right. 
right, so yeah, lots of other people out skiing today. All right, so my plan is that I'm gonna come up here over towards the left, get off of the pond here, and I'm gonna ski up that hill that's straight ahead, and then I'll ski down the hill so I can end with a nice, fun downhill to end the video. I have to get my skis off to get over this. Actually, I should be able to get over over here. There's enough, enough snow coverage or ice coverage for me to at least sidestep across. All right. So yeah, I gotta get up this hill and then I'll ski my way down it. There's some snowshoers over there towards the left. I've never really snowshoed before, but are snowshoes really necessary when the snow is this, this shallow? I guess if you have snowshoes and you want to use them, just like I'm doing with my skis, you take any opportunity you can get. So this hill leads up towards the High Park Zoo, although I won't be going there today. So I think I can smell some of it, some of the farm animals over there. You can see the sun is coming up. Straight up ahead towards the right. Okay, I didn't realize that this trail over here was not, not plowed, so maybe it's the better choice. The park really does slope down towards that pond there, and Coming down through that ravine, I lost my altitude a lot faster than I was expecting. I thought it would be more of a gradual downhill. But it was fun skiing through those trees back there. With cross country skiing, it's the downhills that you really live for. You know, you spend a while climbing up hills and then you eventually get to go down them and that's always fun. All right, so I should be able to get out of here and now I've got to choose my line for coming down this hill. This is the main road that goes around through High Park. I'll ski over here. There's some tracks. Huh. I lost some of my altitude there. I guess I want to ski from up here. All right, 
That looks pretty good. So I'll start from right here and I'll ski my way down the hill. Just get up to the very top here so I can get a good start. I'll turn around. All right, here we go. Woo! <sighs> All right, and there we are back at Grenadier Pond. Well anyway, I hope you enjoyed joining me on my narrated cross-country skiing adventure. If you watched all the way to the end of this video, I'd love to hear your thoughts in the comment section below, and thanks for watching.